So in my tutorial today, I have a, uh, I'm going to use an example where I have a survey. And so I've collected some data over here in column A. If you notice here, it's just a big long list of colors. And so my survey consistent, and it's kind of facetious and um, a little bit simplistic, but I, I did a survey and I asked everybody, what is your favorite color? <coughs> Doing so, I, I've, uh, I've collected data here and I have to find a way to analyze it. And this data is uh, a little different than maybe some of the other data we've analyzed in this particular course because this is known as nominal data. And nominal data has a characteristic that it fits only into one class or category. So some examples of nominal data might include something like gender, whether somebody's male or female, ethnicity, look at categories there, Caucasian, Asian, or Native American, or political affiliation, such as Republicans or, or Democrats. So when we complete a survey or we count participants, we look to determine how many fit into each of these data categories. <coughs> This counting process is better known as a frequency distribution, and we tally the numbers by creating a frequency distribution table. So through frequency distribution, we can take um, data that is actually um, has, has no numeric value, and we can, we can just do a simple count. And that's what we'll attempt to do here in, in uh, my example. So bear with me, I'm using an old, older version of uh, Microsoft Excel here, but that's all I have at my disposal today. And what I want to do is I want to figure out, um, well, first we'll start with uh, what colors do I have here? I have all these different colors here, and I'd like to kind of quantify how many, you know, what do I have for colors? So I'm going to do this kind of in a, in a, a little bit of a, um, I guess a little tricky way here. I'm just going to make a copy of this sheet. I got lots of copies in here. And then I'm going to use uh, one of the Excel um, statistics here where I can actually go through, <coughs> excuse me, and I can, uh, I can delete multiple columns. All right, I'm going to stretch this out a little bit wider than you can see. And so I'm going to go into my data over here. I'll move this so you can see. So I have this little tab here. It says remove duplicates. All right, and I'll do that. I'll just say, and it gives me remove what duplicates. I'm going to say just what's in column A. And I get a little message that I had 103 values here, and I removed all of them except for the five unique ones. So I'll move this back into where you can see it. All right, so I have five colors, green, red, orange, blue, and purple. All right, so I'll go back to my original... Um, data here that I collected and I'm just going to copy those in there and that just is a little bit of, of a time saver for me all right and I'm going to insert a column here all right and I'll start by putting column at the top here all right and then what I'm looking for is frequency frequency is is really just a way of describing how many how many people have green as their favorite color um, let me go through and just clean this up a little bit. I want to make a little table here. Um, so put some borders on. I uh, will bold face. Maybe use a little centering. I'll widen out my frequency a little bit. All right, let's create a formula here that's going to count these. So uh, I left you a tutorial from uh, a Microsoft video. <coughs> shows you how to use the count if function. All right. What we're going to do, count, we're using what's known as a, a, a um, conditional aggregate. So we could, we all know how to use the count. We've been using that for quite a bit of time here. Um, but if we want to go ahead and when we start typing this, we'll see a smart text comes up. We have a count if. What I'm going to do is use this value to go through my range of data cells. Actually, it's too complicated to do that. Let's not do that another idea here. Let's start over again with this. I'm going to escape out of that and I'm going to call this block of cells here. We can give data ranges names. So give this data range the name colors. All right. Whoops, I need to give it, I already have one called colors. So I need to give it another name. 
So I'll call, I'll call this one color values. All right, so that name range is color values. So I'll say equal count if, and I will use my color range, which is color. See how that comes up? Color values. And my criteria for this, I want to see the ones that are, well, green. But green's over here in cell C2. So we're going to say green, I'll say C2. And that shows me that I have 28 greens. If I take this now, use my fill handle, I've come up with a frequency chart of all my color values. So in my survey here, I found that the most popular color is blue. I have 32 people that thought blue was their favorite color. All right, let's go through and let's do a little more, more uh, analysis with this. I want to do a little data visualization. So let me come over here. I'll take this and I'm going to just make a chart. So I'm going to insert. And again, I'm kind of compressed here because I'm working with a smaller screen. I'm going to choose a column chart and just a simple 2D, 2D column chart. <coughs> Make that a little smaller so you can see it. All right, and so um, well, that gives me another way of, of displaying my data. Now, let me change this. I don't want this to say frequency. All right, I want to say um, favorite color. All right, and I can get rid of this too. I don't need this in here. And so I've come up with a, a tool for visualizing my data counting frequency. And again, recognize that this data is different because it's nominal data. In other words, I can't average it. I can't average colors. I can't uh, find a sum of colors, but I can count them. And that's what's unique about um, nominal data. All right, let me put one more column in here. And uh, what I want to do next is I want to look at a relative distribution. All right, relative distribution is a little bit different because it compares um, one particular value with the entire data set. All right, so let me, uh, we're, again, we'll kind of clean this up a little bit. All right, we'll use uh, wrap the text. Okay. Uh, let me center. I'm going to bold face, center. All right, let's figure out the relative dis distribution. So relative distribution is going to be well, just simple calculation. I'll say whatever the frequency is for green divided by the sum of all the frequencies or all the participants. All right? And then the other thing I want to do here is I also want to, so I can um, use the fill handle, copy this down. I'm going to use absolute references rather than relative. All right. And what else do I need to do? Let's make that a percent. I'll pull that on down. <coughs> so now we can see in our survey that 30% of the population chooses blue as its favorite color. All right, let's do one more data visualization with this. And anytime we're, we're working with relative distribution, a really nice tool that utilizes a pie chart. Okay, so I'm going to go over here. I'm going to insert a chart. And to do so, I need to and I'm using my control button on my keyboard here. So I have control, allows me to select two distinct columns or two distinct ranges. All right, let me go back over to, um, we're gonna insert my chart, pi, and let's just do a standard 2D by pi chart. All right, I don't think that gives us enough information there. We need to alter that a little bit. So let's change the chart style a little bit. And we'll find something a little more interesting to use that comes maybe out of the box that I don't have to spend a lot of time with here. Ooh, pretty tight on selections here. Let's stay with our pie chart. But let's, uh, rather than the colors over here, maybe we can adjust this a different way. All right, so um, let's do some formatting here. Close that off. Actually, we're going to need to do something else here. My data series here. 
I want to edit this. Let's get rid of one of these. So, so I'm getting myself a little bit in trouble with this chart here. Let me, I'm just going to delete it out of here. We'll try it again, okay? So I want to do relative distribution and I want to do a pie chart. So I'm going to come over here, I'm going to say insert. I'm going to go over here and grab my pie chart. Just grab a simple 2D pie chart. And I've got to do some adjustment of my values because this doesn't really tell me much. So what I'll do here, I'm going to move this down here and I'll just click a right click on my chart. I'm going to change my data. Whoop, I don't think you can see that. Let me move that up a little higher. So I'll right click, select my data, and then I just want to just make a change. So, so I'll keep with my, my same series here, but I want to change my range that I want to look at. And I'm kind of going to bottle up here a little bit, but I'm going to try and select these cells here, which have, whoops, excuse me, these over here, which have the colors on them. All right, and that'll be my other access label. So I have here, I have my numerical data, and then here I have my nominal values, okay? Let's see if that does, well, that does a little better job. All right, we can continue to tweak this a little bit. Let me try this one. That's a little nicer feel to it or something like, well, that looks good. Um, but, but we can continue to tweak that. Actually, since we're using colors here, we should probably take the time to go through and, and uh, match up the color uh, green with the color green instead of having blue. Red's matched up already in blue with blue instead of green. So we can, we have room that we can um, further develop this. All right, but the basic concepts are here, right? So when we're dealing with nominal values, uh, we work with frequencies, relative distribution, and the tool that we use in Excel is uh, the count if.